Well, I spoke to Dan Eikenson. He's a trade expert with the Cato Institute. He says many industries in the U.S. will be hurt by the tariff. We're talking about $100 billion worth of trade being subject to duties that is not only going to impact American and Chinese companies, but many companies around the world have supply chains running through China. They're going to be adversely affected. Uh, it's quite possible that if President Trump wakes up and gets out of bed on the wrong side of bed, he's going to uh, ask for tariffs on another $100 billion of products. But if, if a deal were to take shape, I think it would involve the company ZTE, which, of course, got itself into some trouble uh, violating U.S. export uh, rules and selling gear to the North Koreans and the Iranians. President Trump wants to give a reprieve to ZTE because that is a condition that President Xi has noted uh, for China agreeing to purchase a lot of U.S. products. I think President Trump wants to come away from this saying, look what I did. I got the Chinese to buy $100, $150 billion worth of U.S. goods. But it's the U.S. Congress that is, is really opposed to that. They see a security threat here, and they want the law to be adhered to. But Congress is going to pay the price because it's Congress's constituents uh, who are going to be feeling the effects of higher input costs due to the U.S. duties on, on, on inputs from China and who are going to be experiencing retaliation from, from China's duties. Is a trade war the right approach, the right strategy to convince them, which, by the way, they deny it, to come to some kind of resolution on allegations of technology transfers and intellectual property theft? No, I don't think so at all. Um, I just think that President Trump believes that China will blink. He thinks that China is more dependent on the U.S. economy than U.S. exporters are on China. But the rationale is akin to saying, we can win a limited nuclear war. There will be, you know, two million casualties over there, and we'll only suffer 500,000 casualties, as though that were acceptable. There are going to be a lot of casualties, a lot of collateral damage from this. It's not a, the best approach. The best approach would be for the United States to stand with Japan and Korea and Europe and others whose companies complain about the same forced technology uh, uh, policies and IP theft policies. Uh, and compel China to change its policies. I think China would respond favorably to that. And which consumers in China or the United States are going to feel the pain more, if you will? Most of these products uh, are intermediate goods. On the U.S. side, they're intermediate goods used by U.S. manufacturing. So it's not the consumers directly that are going to be hit. It's U.S. companies who are consumers. Uh, their cost of production is going to go up. It's the U.S. agricultural community's exports, which are going to be hit in China. Farmers who voted for farm, Trump. Ex exactly. And who traditionally have had uh, quite a lot of sway in Washington because they have a lot of representation on Capitol Hill. So far, they haven't been able to get Congress to do enough. Congress really wanted to work with Trump to get tax reform, which they have. Then there was concern about, you know, if we oppose Trump on the tariffs, that we're going to get primaried and we might not get reelected. They need to grow a backbone. They need to do something about this. They are um, punting on their Article I obligations under the U.S. Constitution, and they're allowing the presidency of a republic to turn into a dictatorship. Our thanks to Dan Eikenson.